Sometimes a casting gets you more excited than others. I really didn't see this one coming, but I got to tell you, I love this one. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And what I'm talking about is when you do a die cast restoration or a custom, you, you go into it with a sort of vision in your head and you're feeling good about things. And the casting goes either this way or this way or this way. And at the end, you're done and you're looking at it and you're either happy or sad or ecstatic this is one of those builds where at the end i am out of my mind crazy happy with how it came out so with no further ado let's get to work so the neat streeter that's what we're doing today a very cool car done poorly by hot wheels okay it, it's it's just ugly it's ugly. This stupid tampo on here, the ugly color. I'm giving it a shake because they were all missing their blowers. And uh, I thought maybe one of them would have the blower inside of it. So I shook this one and I could hear a rattling. So I'm expecting to find a blower inside. And that's why I picked this particular one because I have several of these. So anyhow, as I was saying, it's just ugly. It was really poorly done. I ordered some... Uh, neat street or decals from Second Chance Red Lines, but I just cannot stomach the notion of using them. This car is ugly. The the casting the the car is beautiful. It's a great hot rod, but what what Mattel and Hot Wheels did to it, it it should be a crime. So with the uh, car apart, the, the base, a nice metal base that includes the front grille and headlights, um, straight axles, wheels, which will cut away. And looky, 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 look what I found. It's the blower. That's why I shook it. I was hoping I'd find one that had that little rattle that said there's a blower in there. And sure enough, here it is. Super score. Okay, so base, blower little interior and weirdly enough no glass at all i i don't understand that i think there would have been a windshield in here or something but i i don't know i guess for some reason they thought this kind of a car just ran without windows i i don't i don't know i don't know why there's no glass in it at all but there isn't okay so we'll prep the posts using uh my vix bits and now we can go ahead and get everything uh drilled and tapped out and um, uh, I didn't used to use oil. And I don't know how to explain this, and I don't know why it is, but man, the oil, that little drop of oil makes the drilling and tapping go so much better. It's, it's just night and day different. So get yourself a little oiler and make sure you're oiling when you're drilling out your posts. All right, so once I've drilled out both the front and the back posts, uh, then I can go ahead and, again, another drop of oil, and then we'll get out my little tap handle from Bright Vision, and we'll go ahead and tap some threads into the posts so they'll take the screw. Once we're done doing that, then we can go ahead and run in just a little button head screw. I think I'm going to use... Um, 172 here um so you know these these screws are very very small but so so can the posts they can be very very tiny and if if you use something a little bit too big it just tenfold increases your risk of blowing out the post and i haven't done that in a long time knock on wood and i don't want to do it today Okay, so I have my big tub of citrus strip, and we're going to go ahead and get this neat street, neat streeter body. Did you, 
ever catch the way it's spelled? N e e t, streeter s t r e e t e r. I don't know why, but that's how it's spelled. Okay, so Neat Streeter is going into the stripper, and then we'll let that sit and do its job. But um, weird spelling. Anyhow, okay. So we take this set aside, and after about, I think it was about six hours I came back to this. We open up the jar, and then I'll run it off to the sink to wash off the leftover stripper. And then we can get a good look and see what we've got. So, honestly, there's still quite a bit of the blue paint left on here. It could have been worse. Um, but here's, here's the thing. Even if you have a little bit left on there, the citrus strip is going to have loosened it all up so that it'll just brush right off with the brass bristle brush. So, um, we'll just dry this thing down, make sure it's all nice and, and clean, and then we'll hit it with the brush. And what the brush is going to do is it's going to remove any remaining flakes, and it's going to homogenize the body. And, and that's important if you're going to do Spectraflame, which I'm not. Um, I wanted to go with a just a classic, classic street rod color. So we'll talk about that in a second. But first, at the paint booth, we need a little Tamiya Fine Primer. Why? Because I'm using an opaque paint. All of my castings that get opaque paint get this primer. All right? Now, I wouldn't do this if I was going to use Spectraflame. We'd, we'd take a whole different path. But I have a plan for a very classic-looking street rod. So I've been raving about the Redline Shop's opaque paints lately, and that's what I'm using today. I'm using a little bit of their, their yellow, their opaque yellow paint. Uh, mix it up with a little bit of harder, hardener, apply it with your airbrush, the same as if I was putting on clear coat, and I end up with just these amazing paint jobs, okay? They're so good that they don't need clear coat. Now, that might not be the case today, but hey... You know, if you're looking to get a really, really great paint job, these uh, these urethane paints from the Redline shop, I, I can't say enough about them. So anyhow, uh, we'll apply the paint as we normally do, starting with some tack coats and then some medium coats and then some uh, wet coats. And I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth here. Uh, I used a light gray Tamiya primer and I didn't put enough yellow down over the top of it. And the paint, well, you could see it, it was a little too dark. It didn't look right. So the next day, after this thing was fully dry, I went back and put a whole nother coat of paint on it and finally got that beautiful bright yellow that you're going to see here. Just remember that Anybody you're watching on YouTube, we're humans, we're not perfect, I'm not perfect, I, I just didn't put enough paint on it. Anyhow, I got it fixed, it looks great, and now for my homemade decals. I'm, I made these decals using Adobe Illustrator, and I just wanted a simple little flame job, and I, I kind of toyed around, I monkeyed around with some of the colors, I thought about white. Um, I thought about traditional look, uh, colored flames, but I don't know. I landed on this kind of a light green with a like a, uh, a darker green border around the outside, and they looked fantastic. And what I did is uh, what I, I always like to, when I'm designing decals, I put shots of the, uh, the actual casting on the computer and, and then outline it and do the work there so that I can see what it looks like. And as soon as I saw the green flames, I was like, man, this is going to look awesome. So that's what I opted to do. And we're just laying them down as normal, and then we'll, we'll set them down with a little bit of Walther's. Now, I'm, I'm not much for die-cast chrome or model chrome. I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't look quite right to me. But in this instance, the blower on the, the car should have been chromed. And it instead, they gave us this little plastic piece, and it just wasn't working for me. So I've got it uh, pinched in a pair of tweezers to hold it, and I'm breaking out the Molotow chrome, and I'm going to paint this uh, blower up. Nice, shiny chrome, 
So it will look the way I think it should look, and then we can go ahead and set that uh, aside to dry. Hopefully, it will really jive with that yellow paint, the green flames. It, it, it should all just work, especially because you know where I'm going. You know where I'm going with the wheels. You know I'm using the deep dish chrome wheels. So I think this will all work together really, really nicely. All right, it's time to turn my attention to the base. Now you'll notice I've left the old wheels on. Whenever I can, I always leave them on as long as possible uh, to protect the axles and or hubs. Um, so I've got the casting in my little Tupperware thing and I'm spritzing it down with the Flitz uh, calcium remover. And uh, we'll seal this up and let it sit for just, you know, three, four minutes, not long, um, just enough to kind of take the edge off of some of the tarnish. And then once we're done, we'll go ahead and wash this off really well, dry it, and then we'll really bring it to life using the brass bristle brush. Okay, so done all that. Now it's time to get rid of the ugly, ugly wheels and we're gonna just nip those away so we don't mess up the axles in any way, shape or form. And yes, we're gonna use some hot swap hubs here in just a minute. Those things are so amazing and make these castings just so much easier to do. So anyhow, uh, we'll go ahead and get all four wheels nipped off and then we can move on. So I had a couple spots I wanted to hit up with the wheels gone uh, with the brass bristle brush. So the wheels are off. I'm just going to hit those couple last spots on uh, with the brush. And then we can go ahead and protect the base with none other than the Ren Wax. Um, believe it or not, it took me several years, but this jar is almost empty. I just got in a brand new jar. It's in my drawer. Uh, I'm going to try and get the last bit out of this can first but I finally used the entire can. So anyhow, using a combination of both fingers, thumbs, uh, a soft bristle toothbrush, I got that Renaissance wax worked into the entire base, and that's going to keep it from retarnishing uh, like the very next day. It, you know, it, it'll keep this thing looking nice for a very, very long time. Once that's done, I let it dry for just a few minutes, and then I go ahead and I just polish it all off using a microfiber towel, and the base is going to look amazing, ready to go. Yeah, 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 I, I know, I already told you I'm going to use deep dish chrome wheels, I'm going to use large ones in the rear, mediums in the front, um, it's just, I don't know, it says hot rod to me, and most of the cars that I restore, do customs with, or in this case, a resto mod, um, they need chrome wheels, okay? They just do. So anyhow, I've got my wheels out. I've got four hot swap hubs, and uh, I got my little pliers here. And wh what I do is I kind of grab just half of the hot swap hub, and you got to squeeze it pretty hard, or, or this thing is going to move around, shoot out of the pliers, shoot across the room, it's going to give you fits. you got to kind of hold on to it pretty good, okay? So I've got a good bite on it, and then I just kind of push it into the axle. And once it's on there, I let go with the pliers and just use my thumb and click it on the rest of the way. I'll do that to all four axles, and then we can go ahead and press on some wheels. So sometimes getting the wheels on the hot swap hubs is a little challenging, but it can be done. But I'll tell you, uh, in a recent video I did, I tried to use some of my older wheels. And for the life of me, I could not get them onto the hubs. I would have had to have done a little bit of uh, adjustment to things. And I didn't want to do that. But anyhow, um, yeah, just kind of work with them. Stay patient. Don't damage your axle. And you'll get them on and it'll be great. All right. With all of that said and done, it's time to put this sucker together. So virtually every neat streeter I own, the blower is not in the hood hole. So 
there's there's a problem there. Something isn't working uh, the way Mattel intended it to to hold the blowers in. So I am going to put just a smidgen of my gel control CA glue into the hood, and then I'm going to go ahead and set in the blower, make sure it's positioned properly, and let that dry. Um, frankly, I don't want it to fall out, and apparently they do. They just fall out at the drop of a hat. So a little glue is going to make sure that mine stays in place. Anyhow, once that's done, I can go ahead and fit the interior, then I'll position the base and run a couple screws into it. All right, with these screws, just like that, I am done with my neat streeter, and boy, do I love the look of this car. Let's take a look and see what we've done. Here it is, my neat streeter, and I got to tell you, every time I look at it, I just go crazy. I get so excited over it. It takes me right back to the uh, thoughts and images of American graffiti. Uh, I could see it in a, in a big race, you know, for pink slips and that kind of thing. And it just really, man, it came out so good. Far, far, far better than I ever expected it to. In fact, this is going to be one of my all-time favorite uh, resto mods. I love this thing, and I hope you love it. If you did, please give this video a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and see what you think of the choices I made here on the Neat Streeter. All right, that's going to do it. I hope the rest of your day is magically delicious. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.